Hey guys, before we get started on today's video, I just want to take a quick second and let you know that we now have some stickers. If you want to support the channel, you can go over to the website, linked in the description, and pick you up a sticker. Thanks. Appreciate it. Bye. What are you doing, Double Bubble? What are you grilling? Show me what you're grilling. Ooh. Think they're gonna be good? <laughs> hey guys, welcome to the Honda Resource. On today's episode, we're gonna be taking a set of stock Civic trailing arms and we're gonna be converting them to all wheel drive trailing arms using our PLM adapter plates, some insight hubs, and then we've also got a set of spherical trailing arm bushings. So stay tuned. We're gonna get to swapping all this stuff out and showing you how to do it right in your garage. Okay, so these trying arms were originally for a drum setup. They have been converted to a disc brake setup. Uh, these are plates from Scarebird. They're adapter plates and it's the HON hub. So I will be putting these for sale on my website, hondaresource.com. You can check the link in the description and you can pick these up. I will ask, um, let's say $50 shipped for the pair. So for both of them, that one and that one. And that'll can be that'll be able to convert your drum chilling arms over to a disc brake setup without having to change a bunch of stuff. Uh, we're gonna be knocking out these old trailing arm bushings because you can see they're shot. And taking off this little toe compensator because we don't need that anymore. Uh, we gotta take off all this little stuff here. Uh, it's just a little 12 millimeter nut right here on the back side. And this nut right here is a 24 millimeter. We'll need to take that off. All those four Torx bolts up in there. We'll have to take all those out. Those are all T50. And 32 millimeter axle nut right there. We'll need to take that off to be able to slide this off to get those off. So I got that out now. It did give me a little problem, two of the bolts uh, that the Torx wanted to strip out. So I just drilled the heads out with a half inch drill bit and was able to get it out. So now I've got it completely stripped down. See, I got that trailing arm bushing out. What I'd like to do is knock the center out of it. And then after I knock the center out of it, just take the saws on and make a little slit in both sides of it. You can see it didn't quite go through all the way, but it was able to let it collapse in a little bit. Let it collapse in a little bit. And then it um, makes it really easy to knock out. So that's what I do on that. But now I can go ahead and start test fitting the all wheel drive conversion plate and go ahead and start putting in the spherical trailing arm bushings. I still got to cut that one. So let's go ahead and test fit the trailing arm plate so that I can know where to cut that one. So on these plates, you can see it's got a thick side and a thin side. The thin side goes towards the inside, towards the trailing arm. Thick side goes toward the outside. And these are side specific. They are different, you know, they're mirrored of each other. So. so like you can see here, two of the bolt holes did line up and then um, we had to drill that one out to where it actually lined up. Okay, so same thing with this one. These two line up, you can see that one's just a little bit off. So we'll drill that one out. This one completely misses because that's the part that we have to cut out back here. So what we'll do is we'll go ahead and put, um, we'll mark this. I need to cut it out so like right here and like right here just like we did on this one and we'll cut it out and then we're gonna plate this with a piece of steel and weld it back in here here and then along here Okay, 
All right, so now we got that cut out. Again, that doesn't have to be perfect because we're just plating here. This in here is gonna get cut out more with the hole saw. What we're gonna do now is put two bolts down the bottom, just some 14 millimeter bolts that uh, I have laying around the shop. So we'll get those stuck in there, get that other hole drilled out over there, and then um, we'll proceed to clean it up around the area to be able to start welding the plate on. Okay, so now with this bolted on, we can go ahead and drill this out some more. I'm just gonna use a 3 8 drill bit to drill through that, and then we'll use my step bit to uh, clean it up a little bit, because it's 3 8 ain't quite big enough to run a 14 millimeter through. Pretty easy, pretty easy. So now we've got that drilled out to where the bolt to go through. I'm gonna take my grinder and just clean up some of these edges in here. Also, uh, I'll take a marker and mark the edges all the way around. And then we'll clean up all the metal on the trailing arm with the grinder and clean the edge off of the plate itself so that we have a good surface to clean surface to weld. I don't claim to be a welder, but it, I mean, that should hold it just fine. It ain't the most beautiful welds out there, but hey, whatever. Still gonna send it. The trailing arm bushings, or the trailing arm spherical bearings, they come with these little plates like you can put here in the, the uh, thing here to like drill your holes. The thing is, is like, this thing fits in here tight in one spot, so it can't move around. So what I'm gonna do is just use a center punch that actually fits this hole snug. See, it fits it snug. I just had a bunch of center punches here. So. Um, put it right here, punch it, and then drill my holes out. I'm using a 3 8 drill bit to uh, drill this with. And then if I need to go a little bit bigger, I'll just use my step bit to drill them out a little bit more to be able to fit this bolt <laughs> that comes with them. It doesn't quite fit, so we'll just step that out a little bit with the step bit, and we'll be good to go. So for the bolts that PLM provides with the spherical bearings, uh, the Allen head is a six millimeter. I'm not exactly sure what PLM's got going on here, but we have two different size nuts that came with it. So these are actually a 17 millimeter, the ones that actually properly fit it. All right, so we got that installed. This side right here does go up. So you can see just the way it's sitting on the table right now. This side right here is up. So make sure you're putting that in the up position. Just like that, all right? <laughs> I don't know why they had two nuts that were wrong. So whenever I go to Home Depot to get the hole saw for this, I'll just pick up two more nuts that have nylon insert that actually fit these bolts. 
Okay, all right. So this is a Honda Insight, first-gen Honda Insight front hub that we are using here on the rear. We've already got it bolted in with three bolts. Just use some 14 millimeter bolts over here for my bin that went through. And then uh, you see the head of it just protrudes there. I'll take them out and measure them just so you can see about how long you need. I don't ever start at this end of the tape because sometimes this can be off. So what I like to do is start at like the two and you can see it's right at two inches, um, two inches long from the base of the head, like here to here. So if you start at five and it ends at three, so two inches is what you'll need, a two inch. It's a M12, I believe, yeah. And see, that's looking great, boy. Got that spherical bearing in there. The insight hub, the adapter plate. And just for uh, shits and giggles, I guess, um, I measured from the back of this, which would be where it mounts to the trailing arm, to the back of this to see how far out. That's what, about right at three inches. And then if you look at this, from the trailing arm to the back of that, right at three inches. So it doesn't really make your offset more. Gives you the option to add an axle. <laughs> Later in the day now, I just got back from Lowe's. I went and got a, a hole saw. This is two and three quarters is the size of this hole. So we got that and then I'll just have to use my uh, attachment that actually attached it to the drill for that. And then I also picked up some Rust-Oleum black spray paint. This is uh, the better quality of Rust-Oleum. It's a professional grade. It works really good, dries fast, looks nice, holds up well. And then picked up some more odds and ends too. Some Sawzall blades, some more locking nuts for those other um, bolts for the uh, spherical bushings, some more cutoff wheels for my grinder, and another flat disc because I really like these. They, they do a nice job of finishing out some um, metal keeps it from having a bunch of grind marks and stuff it makes it really nice and uh yeah just uh <laughs> that whole saw in this little bit of stuff right here it was 60 bucks unbelievable pretty straightforward Notches out really nice on the back. And so now all I gotta do is plate this one section and this one's done, ready for paint. All right, so what I've done here is make a cardboard template for how I wanna make this piece. piece of, I've just got a piece of two and a half inch wide flat stock from Home Depot or Lowe's, wherever your home improvement store is. And that's what we're gonna be using to uh, replicate this cardboard template. So all I'm gonna do is Lay it up here and mark it out. Cut it out with my cutoff wheel on the grinder. I'll have to probably put a couple tacks and then bend it with a hammer until I get it around. You see, you see it's not straight down. It needs to come around at a bend, kind of like this piece does. See how it goes. So we'll work it on there though. Heck yeah. So I ran out of welding gas when I was welding the little back plate on the other trailing arm, this plate. So I got that plate welded on this one though. Yes, I know it does look beautiful, but I promise you, it's not going go anywhere. You can see it gives us plenty of room, axle clearance. We'll still put our bolt all the way through it there. Put those three, those three will go through the trailing, through the trailing arm, through the bracket, into the bearing. This one just goes through the, um, bracket and into the bearing. Went ahead and took that spherical bearing back out. 
I'm just gonna use my wire wheel on my drill, clean this up and uh, throw some spray paint on it. All right, so we got out here drying off right now in the sun. Just got through laying down the second coat. Just gonna let that cure and then uh, just go ahead and get her reassembled. Two coats is all I'm gonna put on it. I don't really care to do much more. And I think that will be quite sufficient. What'd you think, Dakota? Huh? Scoot him. Talk to him. So now I've got the hub bolted back in. You can see I've got all four bolts in it there. And now I just gotta put my trailing arm spherical bearing back in. And then this arm is complete. Now we have an all-wheel drive trailing arm that's complete, com also including the spherical trailing arm bushing, and obviously this is going to slide in and out until I get it bolted into the car, but that's uh, it's a wrap. I mean, it's installed. Got the uh, spindle, the uh, got the insight hub all mounted up in there. It accepts the CV axle for the Let's see, we'd use two right rear first gen CRV axles. So uh, that's what we'll be using on this application. This is going in the EG Coupe, the Green Goblin. So if you're interested in picking up a set of the adapter plates or the spherical trailing arm bushings, you can check out the link in the description. It goes to my website. And if you use the discount code YouTube, it'll get you a nice little discount off of them. And then I'll have an Amazon link in the description also for the insight, insight hubs. And all in all, I think that um, I have less than 500 bucks in the complete setup that you're seeing here. So you, you can't really uh, buy a set of all-wheel drive trailing arms for 500 bucks. So if you're able to modify and do a little bit of welding, you can do this easily, like I said, for about 500 bucks. Hope to see you again on the next episode. Hopefully that'll be soon. See ya! Just want to show y'all this CRV that I'm working on right now. It's a customer complaint of oil leak. As you can see, it's definitely been leaking. But if you look, it was uh, leaking from the filter. The filter wasn't tight. But look, I put this filter on back in 2019. And here it is almost 2023. Three and a half years this filter's been on there. Sheesh. Um, yeah, I think the, the oil pan gasket is fine though. I think that's one of those old, the Felpro with the metal ring in it, but I just think it's leaking from down, down the block. Cause literally I took the finger. And, whew.